it's time for uh, our panel to to start the discussion. So uh, I now invite uh, Dr. Edmunds, Dr. Savic, and Daniel Silva to join me for our fair data applied uh, Zonopti vector for pathogen panel. Please turn on your camera, mute yourself, and let's start uh, with a question from the audience, if any. Thank you. If the audience doesn't have a question yet, I will uh, give a question to Sarah. Uh, right now, with, right now we don't have any question on So please go. So it was very nice to see the number of downloads, and as you mentioned, most are in the US. Do you have a hypothesis of why so many downloads from the US? Do you think is mostly because of the language as a English book, or do you think there's something else, Sarah? Um, uh, for sure, language is one of the, 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 the biggest uh, distinguishers between which, uh, which open data you're going to use, because there are, of course, there are open data in, in native languages for, for um, every country. But um, I think, yes, that is one component. And I have never asked, actually, uh, why is it like that? And I didn't um, analyze that. But um, probably there are, like in Europe, there are probably too many uh, open possibilities. So maybe maybe um, people use other like PubMed and so on. And uh, I don't know. Or there is another option that um, this particular publisher has a lot of collaboratives in these countries. Like they have me in Serbia. So they have probably a lot of people in Mexico or in, uh, I don't know, in US or something like that. And they promote actually for the, for the, for, because whenever you get um, a book or something from them, you get a link and you get um, uh, an email that you can share to all of your networks and to your colleagues and so on. And then I guess people share it that way also. And maybe they have a lot of collaborate, most of the collaborators from, from these countries. Thank you, that was, that was nice. Do we have a question in the chat? I'm full of questions, but give more time <laughs> for other people. Well, I think you can ask another question, Ranieri. Uh -huh. I, right now, there are no questions from the it's, chat and there are Scott. no hands raised. Scott, are, we, are you with us? Uh, yep, yeah. hi. Hi. Uh, so you, going back to your keynote that uh, was really incredible. I learned a lot, so many nice projects, but, uh, can you talk about your experience about teaching how young researchers, PhD students uh, publish data in a fair way? I remember, remember from your biography that you did some things related with that, that I think, at the Hong Kong University. So I my um, teaching at HKU was, um, to, to, for the MLIM course, the Masters in Library and Information Management. And so it wasn't really people who had data. It's the next generation of librarians who are trying to get more. more and, and I co-taught specifically the, the, yeah, the, the course on data management and data curation. And so the students I was interacting with, half of them were librarians who were trying to get more kind of digitally savvy and 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 um uh you, you know um better equipped to 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 deal with data and and where kind of libraries are sort of he heading in the future and then the other half of the student were um computer scientists were like computer science students um people coming in from uh who were more kind of computationally savvy uh, you know digitally savvy and wanting to apply it in in this kind of area of libraries and so it was more training the, the intermediaries and the, the people who, who the next generation of data stewards and people will help the, da the data producers. We, we, I tried to do a project where we, we were encouraging if people had data, one of, one, of the, one of the final year projects was if people had data, um, could they follow everything that they've learned in the course to then present it and make, make it fair? But we didn't have many, not, not many of the students actually had, had their own data sets. Um, 
from my experience of um you know we've done other workshops uh, uh, around the place um on 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 open data and 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 the like tied in with conferences and going to some um other, you know universities in australia and and and, and india and the like and um for, from publishing data it we do get a lot of submissions from from students because um it, often it's the students have done the data collection and and um you know it, it, it it's quite a common uh, output of, a, of of say a phd or a or a masters is to 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 create a, a, an amount of data and but in that time period in the in the few you know the 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 year or the, the few years that you have you may not be able to like analyze and get the get the most out of of that data your you know your supervisor your um that the, the the people in your lab may use that data set for for, for many many uh, years uh, going forward and and actually a data publication is a really nice phd uh, is a really nice phd output because it's it's you know at least you're getting kind of credit it, it can kind of contribute to your thesis and sh and at least you've got something to kind of something to kind of show from that so um that's definitely something that that yeah we have seen um if if you look at look at our papers um uh, in in the data papers that we specifically publish a lot of them are um are, are from from students and early career researchers and we we give them a, a means to do this and and yeah generally they kind of have gone to the gone through the process of sharing it and so they should be quite kind of data literate in 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 that manner but because we um have a team of uh we're unusual as a journal. We've got three uh, bi curators on hand to actually work with the authors and and help them kind of share the data. So um, that's you know they they will they will if this if they are having problems with the data then then um, we we give them a little bit of guidance and and hopefully uh, training from that process. So that's very nice. Uh, do you saw any big changes on? Uh, landscape of fair data in Hong Kong universities from the time that you were training, as you say, the next generation of librarians to now? So I've been in Hong Kong for about a decade. And um, on top of my day job, uh, you know, publishing research data, um, I've see, I've, uh, I was involved in Open Data Hong Kong, which has been a kind of a citizen group on um, uh, dealing more with the government data so i thought it was really fascinating you 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 presented uh, data.gov for I mean, data.gov.hk because i've seen the evolution of that from um from the very first it, it was the, when they first launched uh, data.1 um was the, was the kind of pilot of that and then there's been a number of iterations of data.gov.hk and it has improved a lot um, there are still deficiencies, you know, you, you can find the, the disease, you could find the disease data, but you couldn't find the vector data, for example. I presented an example for, of the of the vector data that they haven't added it to the website yet. There's still, you know, a lot of government departments need to go to the effort to, to um, add this. Um, there is a, it's called the Open Data, um, the Hong Kong Open Data Index are doing a lot of work cataloging this and, and providing feedback to the government to and they've been doing this the second iteration of that was just published last week or the week before but they're, they're one project that is um really um systematically looking at all of that data and saying look these are the things you're doing well these are the things that need improving and hoping that that helps the government kind of prioritize and and change things um in terms of the the universities Part of the reason HKU set up this uh, data management, data curation course is obviously this is the direction of direction of traffic. Hopefully, we helped in a small amount based on that. Um, and um, the unit, you know, uh, HKU um, launched a couple of years ago launched the first uh, data repository for for a university. They had institutional repositories for publications, but um, but yeah, they 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 moved they. Um, without without any kind of government pressure, because UGC the 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 funders in Hong Kong have no policies on on data in compared to uh, which is uh, very different from uh, like uh, European Union, North America, um, other jurisdictions. But HKU were, were very forward thinking. 
a, a lot driven because they were having a lot of problems with um, um, uh, uh, fights over um, sources of data. There was, was a few kind of scandals came out and they kind of really realized that actually centralizing and having policies in this will, will actually help them um, reduce the, 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 these sorts of problems. But City U was the second university in Hong Kong to then um, uh, have a data repository in the same way. Um, uh, Poly, uh, um, HKUST has one. Um, it, it is in, in recent years, at least the universities, there hasn't been a centralized um, push from the from the funders and the government, uh, but the universities themselves have, 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 have taken it upon themselves to, to, to do this, which is very encouraging. And um, I mentioned the uh, the uh, UNESCO open science recommendations that were just um, uh, they they were just passed by UNESCO in November, um, and it was uni unilaterally endorsed by and and uh, ratified by all of the host by all of the members member nations of UNESCO. That potentially is going to um, it would be very interesting to see what happens from that because. Um, while the, the, the funders and the government in Hong Kong hasn't really done anything in this area, because si China, mainland China, you know, the mainland has now signed uh, and endorsed these recommendations that the, the, these UNESCO recommendations are supposed to be worked into your legislation and, and policies and practices. And, and so now China's made a commitment to um, build open science policies into their, into their uh, research policies. Hong Kong is now obliged to do this. Um, they may not have, you know, the, the, the government here may not have noticed all of these things, but um, now uh, at some point it's actually going to kind of hit home and the pressure is now going to come uh, to, to, um, to, to invest in this, to build infrastructure, to build policy. So it'd be very, very interesting to see um, when this happens. Thank you. That's okay, very thank you very nice. much. Thank you very much for uh, the interesting debate that has been created. There is a question in the chat for Dr. Savic, but unfortunately, I, as a chair, I have also the unfortunate duty that to stop the debates because uh, we have a schedule, unfortunately, to meet. And uh, yeah, uh, we have a break scheduled until uh, 5 10. Uh, so I, uh, I have the unfortunate duty to stop the, <laughs> this discussion. Anyways, you can keep going, uh, you can keep discussing in the chat if you want. There are gonna be, uh, at the end of the sessions, there are gonna be other chat rooms. So for now, I uh, I have unfortunately to stop the meeting, uh, to stop the meeting, to stop the discussion and uh, recall it uh, at 5.10.